good morning, friends. Hi, what's up, Sean? How you doing? How's it going? Not too bad. Uh, uh, kind of a weird day. It's a weird um, day. We, yeah, we're, we we started a little bit late. Do we want to talk about not the actual reason, but the reason that we've agreed on <laughs> of why we're a little <laughs> late today? Yeah. So, it snowed in Canada today. It um, snowed. Believe it or not, which is very, very weird for April 21st. So, I woke up... Um, there was grass, um, buds on the trees and everything, but there probably, probably is not anymore. <laughs> um, we probably lost all that. Um, so everybody's got to do all their crops and everything like that again. Yes. Uh, but it was crazy. Yeah, I woke up this morning and it looked like uh, Christmas. Um, That's crazy. Very, just, very strange. Just for reference, it was 95 where I am yesterday. So oh it is. Oh, I know. Break. It's, like it's wild. <laughs> Um, Sean, go ahead and introduce yourself. We see a lot of familiar faces in chat. Hello, friends. Um, I'm Andrew Hockrattle, but I'm not important. Uh, Sean, do you want to go ahead and introduce yourself, tell everyone a little bit about you, who you are, and what you do? What's up, everybody? So I am, uh, I'm Sean. Uh, I am a composite artist, and I like to just uh, design another perspective. So Ooh, there's a lot of, uh, yeah, so there's a lot of things that like cover up perspectives, such as like commercials or TV shows or, you know, just all the entertainment that we have. And I like to show people a lot of the, um, a lot of like the, you know, the perspectives that we've kind of, um, hidden in a sense so i'm going to show um an example um after actually when i'm sharing my screen there uh, just let me know when it's on my screen oh yes it will be I, on your screen sorry i was plugging your instagram uh if we want to get there first <laughs> where can people follow you uh instagram website all that stuff oh so, yeah so that's actually um that's on my canvas here as well so you can follow oh, me yeah. at sean Reichen. um uh i have my website which is sean art you can go to that the links Cody put in in the chat because uh, Cody's just a legend, so it's they, so they help me out at all times. Perfect. Um, so this is just some of my uh, work on Instagram. There, um, the SpongeBob piece was my latest piece. So that is something like uncovering kind of a different perspective, right? Because with SpongeBob, um, as an example, with SpongeBob, you saw like an empty, you know completely spotless uh ocean with like you know the fish were literally living in trash yes <laughs> they were literally living in trash and uh it was it, it was okay uh it was cool it was fine um and i think that that kind of promoted the the wrong perspective because like i love spongebob don't get me wrong it's a great it's a great community um it's a great comedy for sure great cartoon but the fact that fish are living in in trash um kind of like set it off for me because I'm like, wow, uh, that's that's kind of interesting. Um, so I redesigned a composite calling it New Neighbors, which is basically a new neighborhood being developed in Bikini Bottom. Well, I mean, like this is how they developed the show, which is all, all tra trash basically and all that kind of stuff with all these homes. So now the, the community is kind of expanding. They're building more skyscrapers with garbage bags and, and recycling and, and all that kind of stuff. Um, so that's what um, this image is saying. Um, it's kind of showing you the wrong um, in, in a sense, but in, in a, the comedy way still. Um, so what we're going to do today is we are basically going to recreate this, the SpongeBob house. Um, and we're going to use 3D objects through Pixel Squid today. Because, yes. Yeah, because you can uh use Pixel Squid for like just anything almost because they give you all these little pieces and puzzle pieces and you can put it together in almost any way and um, a quick so, question for you sean um who lives in that pineapple that's under the sea uh this one right here uh i, I might be uh for rent now because okay the price, yeah, uh, yeah the prices are a little bit yeah like toronto right now so they're kind of like going up and down right oh, skyrocketing i'm in southern california so i know exactly yeah it is a vacant apartment <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, studio space. So, it is one square foot with uh two hundred and seventy five thousand dollars. <laughs> <laughs> Waterfront property. Yeah. yeah, and it looks like it's close to school. This garbage bag here, so you know that that also puts up the prices. So uh... exactly, exactly. Okay, so Pixel Squid, um, great plugin, great tool. Can you tell us a little bit about what that is? How we're going to use it today? Um, because I know a lot of people maybe haven't explored three D in Photoshop before. Um, and so I think it would be fun for exposure for everyone to that. 
Yeah, so I was, uh, I am going to learn Blender. I say that probably every single day. Uh, I'm going to learn that eventually. <laughs> I think every artist has said that ever since like NFT came out. Everybody's like, I, I want to be a 3D artist now. Yes. Um, <laughs> so a lot of people are going in that way. I want to because I want to develop my own assets and see if I can contribute to this uh, Pixel Squid library. Um, but basically, it is a huge library full of um, 3D elements that you can already bring into Photoshop. So if you're really familiar with Photoshop, using um, like stock imagery and all that kind of stuff in composites, this will really help you uh, yeah. a lot. And um, Pixel Squid's whole thing is that they want to try to make like the 3D world as easy as the 2D world, right? Because I think in Photoshop, a lot of us are like, layer, 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 layer. And then 3D happens and we're like, this isn't a layer. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Then it seems like, right? Like your brain just like breaks a little bit. And you're like, wait a minute, it moves? Uh, and so, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I just think that it's just so cool because before I could spend like, uh, I worked at a marketing firm and all that, and at, like every day it was all about like speed, 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 as fast as possible, get it done as, as much as possible. And I was always cutting out images. I mean, it's easy with like the sky replace and, uh, and like all the new tools and stuff. But when I started Photoshop, we didn't have all that fanciness. Yep. Um, and we didn't have all the ability to easily cut things out. So it took me hours. <laughs> it took me hours and out. Sometimes I would even higher services to cut it out for me so that I could just like I, utilize the assets. I have exactly a hundred percent done that where I'm like, I know where I want to go. Just, I don't want to spend the time cutting things I, out. Exactly. It just, sometimes it just, it takes so long. And then I, I just don't want to complete the other piece out because I'm like, well, I spent a week cutting this out. Yep. Like I just can't do it anymore. So pixel squid found it out like probably three years ago, maybe two, maybe two and a half. Okay. Um, and ever since then, I've kind of utilized it in almost every single one of my composites. And this has uh, made my editing time from like 10 hours down to like two or one and a half hours. Um, and that, and it varies, obviously, uh, it depends on like my mood, what I'm working on at the time, what I'm managing. I also manage a Discord server, which is like a huge art community and that takes up a lot of my time so i'm doing a lot of vector work and all that and logo work as well um, i don't just do this stuff um, but this is the stuff that i really enjoy doing um, so we're basically going to recreate uh this today i'm not gonna recreate everything around because this piece is actually available as an nft um, for charity so it's uh all the profits are going towards uh ocean um like protection and all that kind of stuff That's so it's awesome. gonna be really cool um it's going towards a good cause and it definitely has that message behind it but today we're going to just design this because this asset right here would normally you know it's normally pretty hard to find the spongebob asset uh yeah without you know breaking without having to pay for all the licensing and everything like that you know you can recreate this house as long as you don't have spongebob or any of the characters that are caught all those all that fancy stuff in there but the house the pineapple that's okay <laughs> yes exactly this is this is a pineapple that has been dropped in the ocean that happens to have a door <laughs> that fell in front of it or on it with <laughs> like it just all is coincidental yeah. of course it just happens to have all that allegedly stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> so we're gonna recreate that today with this image so this image is from adobe stock i like to use um adobe stock because it adds right into your libraries normally which is just really easy you don't have that to your downloads take up all that side space and everything um i always crop my canvases when i start i always crop them down to um eight and a half by 11 um which is weird because my crop tool is not working right now have you, are, do you work in eight and a half by 11? Are you just used to like making stuff for print? Cause I do so much digital that I just like start 16 by nine just to, to like, that's what it's going to be. Uh, have you le learned that over the time? So the reason why I do eight by 10 is because I actually like spent years focusing on Instagram, not anymore because I'm not really a fan of how things are like laid out now on Instagram, mm -hmm. but if you post an eight, uh, an eight by uh, 10 on Instagram, it literally takes up top to bottom of the screen and it can't go any taller than that. Can't oh. go any wider or anything, but it literally takes up the whole 
Instagram feed. So you can't get duplicate content when somebody's scrolling down. Your piece will literally take up the full screen at that time. That's great. If you do landscape and all that stuff, right? You can almost get two pieces in there at the same time if you're uploading landscapes. So it's always a good thing to keep in mind. I kind of went off of landscape and went into square and then I went into the eight, eight by um, 10 because you can print it and it just had a secondary uh, use rather yep. than just a square, which is harder to so find your, a frame for. Yeah, you're, I was gonna say your competition, your, sorry, composition has to allocate for this will get cropped to a square and so you can't have like the weird like high low. It's like, okay, this is the space that's gonna hit. So we need to have something here that's interesting. It, exactly. So what you can do with that actually is uh, sometimes I like to just, you know, view view the rulers and then you kind of just set like your, just some guides, just knowing that that's kind of your crop area, right? Yes, and the um, rest is bonus content. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The rest could be whatever you want, really. Yes. Uh, just knowing that this is l what's gonna be in view on your, uh, on your feed, basically. Um, another thing that I focus on as well when I'm posting <laughs> is colors. I'm not sure if you noticed that on my Instagram. Um, yes. I like to stick with a specific color scheme for nine images and then completely change it. Um, I do this for all my client work too. So if whatever color I'm in at the month is literally the color that they're getting on their client pieces, um, Sometimes we can add other colors for sure. Like, of course we can add all the branding colors and everything like that. But when it comes down to, um, you know, uh, when it comes down to like uh, composites and stuff like that, people like simplistic colors. They don't like too many going yes. on. Yes, and uh, I love branding. the like HDR -y contrast that it really is like those shadows and highlights and then that color. The, there is other stuff going on in the composition, but it's like, here are the three things you're getting out of this and you're just gonna like punch it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and some of the stuff is like really dark in contrast, but that's just because my shadow works a little bit weird sometimes. Uh, <laughs> I, I like to like tr challenge myself with reversing the lighting completely, which is like oh sometimes a really hard task uh, because all the highlights could be like really flipped. Yes. So, uh, yeah. So doing that is uh, is really hard. Uh, no problem. Yeah, eight and a half by eleven. Definitely, definitely go for uh, that. That's that's key. Um, so I'm gonna add the pineapple here. We're gonna just uh, start right away. I'm a pretty fast editor, so don't. So if you have any questions, just like literally put it inside the chat there because yes. I will move fast. Yes, um, and chat. I'll be your new best friend. Um, put them in there. I'll ask questions. If we're like going in it, like I'll wait. But put all your questions in there. Uh, if you have any funny jokes, share them with us. Um, just, yeah, chat it up. Let, also, let us know where you're from. Because uh, I know, Sean, you're up yeah. in Canada, right? Yep. I'm in California. Chat, where are you from? That felt like the most Dora Explorer thing I've ever done on stream. <laughs> yeah. Where are on you from? The location it's, that you're from. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I can hear from. you. <laughs> All right. So we're hopping in. Uh, let's get in and do a little SpongeBob work. Yeah, so right now I'm basically just removing the shadows and boosting the quality up a little bit. So Pixel Squid does like to add some shadows in case, you know, you, you need to utilize them at the moment. They are sometimes helpful. For me, we're cropping off the bottom of this uh, pineapple, so they're not going to be helpful at all for us at this point. Um, I'm going to tilt it forward a little tad bit here. Um, but then I'm also going to kind of like curve the front with the pen tool because if you know if the the pineapple's sitting on the ground, it's not just going to be a flat cut right across. Um, it's got to have this curve to it still. This this whole element has a curve up here. It's also got a curve up here. Um, so you have to keep that in mind. It's kind of like a football, right? Um, so when I I'll just grab my pen tool and I'll click over here and over here and then i basically just create a nice little arch it doesn't have to be like per too perfect because you're going to create a mask anyways um and i think it's interesting with masks of like how you're creating the work path you're gonna kind of mask that out it's interesting how in our brains we think that it needs to be like tilted somehow or the perspective needs to change and you can really get away with just masking stuff and your brain like fills in the gaps of it like oh it yep. curls now or like oh there's dirt under it and you're like nope just cropped it <laughs> just cropped believe it or not i actually uh 
hide a lot of things in my composite too. Like if I find that like the shadow work over here is weird. So let's go back to this as a reference. If I find that my shadow work is weird in this area, I'll, I'll just pull up the can up front here um, yes. so that I don't have to worry about the ground anymore, uh, at, like around here. The correct shadowing can be all in here for sure, which could give that impression that you're looking for. But all these side elements and stuff, does anybody even look at those? <laughs> does anybody and, even zoom up on those? Yes, and I it feels so. like, oh, there's something more in the composition. And you're like, it's not bonus content. It's actually hiding something that I didn't want to do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I just didn't want to edit that because it would have taken me hours. <laughs> yes. So I like to, and if I want to get the tones of my background, rather than bring up any image or anything like that, I always just bring this forward and then I will blur this completely um, so that there's no more texture to it. Oh, interesting. Um, and this is how I get basically all the color tones as well, um, like exactly how I want them. So I'll click OK, and then I'll just clip mask this into the pineapple, and then I'll probably set this to like um, color, and then you just kind of put this to like a low opacity or so. This way you're just starting to get those tones in there while you're um, working on blending. Um, it's not going to be dramatic. Obviously, it's not exactly on point yet, but that's because I have to edit and enhance the levels of this object. So the tone is correct at 50%, but the levels of this isn't matching the C. So I'll just go into levels here. If it's a Since it's a smart object, Pixel Squid makes all the objects smart. Um, you can basically bring all of your adjustment layers from um, asset to asset. Um, I basically like the most important tool to me in Photoshop is the layers panel. Yes. The amount of control that you have over the layers panel and um, how you can uh, arrange your whole uh, composite is just insane. Um, a lot of people don't know about the, uh, oh, sorry, my computer's a little bit all over the place right now, but a lot of people don't really know about the um, the fact that you can sort your layers by whatever you want, right? So if you have um, smart uh, objects or what? Uh, you colorize your layers or anything, there's actually a filter system that you can filter through all of your layers without looking at them all. And everybody always thinks that it's like, super annoying to look at but this thing called kind up here is is your filter system you go into color and if i wanted to just search for my red artboard then i'll just do red and i can now see all just just my red layers right i, I did not know that this existed and that is such a game changer uh it is. that's crazy because um, i i do the same thing where i like to color code them and i just finished working on a puzzle that was 800 layers um, it was just like a ton of different objects and I'm like clicking and trying to select each object. Like, where is this? Where is this? Where is this? This would have been it, so insanely helpful. It's really cool. Cause you could do like selected, right? So whatever is selected on the canvas, you could see that all that, or like you're so just your selected layers. You can do it by effect if you want, by bevel, stroke, inner shadow, anything, right? This is a whole filter system built into Photoshop and nobody, nobody ever looks at that. The, they always sort of like, yes. skip past it. <laughs> this is why I love the Adobe live streams. Like I've been doing these forever and every single time I learn something that's like, well, that just saved me hours out of my day. Uh, and <laughs> this is it today, chat. And chat's losing their mind as well. Um, <laughs> you can sort your layers by kind. That's insane. <laughs> yeah. And I, that's why I like I'll, I'll color my layers and everything. I've actually made it so that um, just using the layers panel, I made it so that um, without actions or anything like that, um, you can edit any piece of my composite and it will automatically adjust everything for you. Lighting, um, all the um, drop shadows, everything on it, uh, color tones, it goes right across. And that's actually how I created the uh, my filter in Photoshop camera, the new reflections um, filter, is I created a smart file that already functioned as a filter um, before it was even live on the filter thing. So all Adobe had to do is just double click one file and upload their own image and it edited every single filter for them right in front of them and they could see it. Yes. Uh, 
That's crazy. The power uh, of the layers panel. Yeah. So someone in chat is saying, can we promote Sean's Discord community? Sean, what's your Discord community? Where can people get connected? I'm sure that Cody will it's have actually, a link. It's actually right on this stream there. So it I, is. I've answered everybody's questions on the stream here. So discord.gg is, is that. I also help with all of the Adobe communities too. So if you need anything, I am in any one of those. So if you are in those servers, ping Sean. And yes. I, uh, if you go and scream out your window, he will manifest outside and come to help yeah, you. Exactly. That's, yep. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> maybe not now because there's so much snow on the ground, but like. <laughs> yes, it's too cold to go out. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So I'm going to just start building um, my door and everything here. So I, I have a lot of elements, as you can see, in my little library here. Um, I just add endless amount of uh, items at all times. I just keep going. Uh, you can sort them out inside different folders if you want, which is nice per project. I, I was trying to sort it out at one point, but then I realized the title started getting really weird and I, I lost uh, my whole sorting uh, abilities. Yes. But uh, that's Photoshop for you. Um, and yeah. it's a pretty it's a pretty robust library, right? Uh, like Pixel School just has a ton of stuff. It's huge, yeah. It's um, almost anything is is on there um, now. And with um, their current uh, new partnership, which is uh, I'm very excited about, which is Shutterstock, um, it's just gonna get like you know Shutterstock. It's just gonna get bigger, right? Oh yeah. So, uh, they've been in the game for a really long time. So it's just a good partnership between the two. Um, so I'm gonna add my door in here now. And it's all integrated into Photoshop, which is kind of cool. There isn't a lot of back and forth. Like it's, mm -hmm. you're just, we're staying in Photoshop today. I feel like a lot of other resources, you'd have to go back and forth, load it in, download, open, whatever. And it's just like, no, it's just here. Like it's just fully integrated. Yeah, I got, uh, I got it all sitting in there and uh, <laughs> sometimes it's confusing but most of the time it's pretty good um i do get a little thrown off sometimes with um how many assets i have going on because i can like really uh i can really crank my anxiety to like the max sometimes by just having all these assets in front of me yeah i'm a really creative person so like i could go in so many different directions and like I could I could be going doing three pieces at the same time sometimes just so that I can recycle the thoughts that are going through my head. Yep. Uh, otherwise, I wouldn't be able to sleep at night because I'll just be like thinking about like SpongeBob's house and how to like create it in Photoshop or something. Right? Yes, which is great because I think that like as artists, there's a lot of times that we'll start working on something and have all these ideas and we'll try to like pack it all into the same composition. And so I love that you're like, no, no, no. I like take those ideas and split them out into different ones so that you get like multiple pieces out of an idea and not just like, it's all here. Yeah, you got like little series then. And then, then you know, you can continue the story. One, one story that I really like to continue. I'm not sure if anybody follows my work in here, um, but uh, the Penguin series is definitely one that I really, really like to follow um, and, and do. I've done a, a, a Penguin piece on uh, the Photoshop uh, on Adobe Live before. I think my first live I actually I did was a penguin piece. And I, I basically put them underwater uh, and then we called it the, the game changer, um, which was, which was kind of cool. Um, it was fun. And I like to put them all in weird places, right? Just doing human things, yes. uh, regular things. Sometimes I like to, um, think that the penguin in the Photoshop commercial is, is just dedicated. That's totally just dedicated to me. That's, that's all me. It's your book. His <laughs> it's name is Sean. His name is Sean. Yeah. Yeah. You can, name, yeah. We'll just name it Sean from now on. Yes. Sean the penguin. It's just because it's in the Keith Haring campaign. And I'm like, I was on that campaign. I... Um, <laughs> penguins have and you ever have... designed a penguin on a subway yeah i i actually anytime that adobe does a like collaboration with like lady god they can see my screen and everything like that yep now? perfect all right sorry about that everybody rogers all right so puppet war that's what we're in um so i'm basically right now just kind of fixing the arch around the um 
the door frame because it had a little bit of a point at the top here. So I'm just kind of like, just making it so that's more, less, uh, less flat. All right. All right. Did I freeze out again? Uh, it looks like we're having some weird buffering okay. stuff. It might be a mix of my end and your end, but uh, it is the stream is coming through, so hopefully the um, replay will be good. Uh, if we keep going and power through, I think we'll be okay. Okay, so this the uh, so what if we turned off our webcams for a quick sec? Uh, let's, let's give it a shot. Let's do this. I'm going to, uh, go ahead and pull, uh, to a holding screen. I don't know and... what's up because my processing, if I look at my processing speeds, they, they're pretty fast right now. Yes. Um, we will be right there and we'll be right back over the stream. Uh, give us just a minute y'all. Um, we'll be right back. I don't know what's up. Hello everyone. It looks like we're back. I, I don't know what's up. Um, okay. Like it's not, okay. Um, I think we're back now. Let's go ahead and have you do a quick reset. Uh, we'll do one more reset, see if we can catch up I the lag, and then provider. we will continue on. One more reset, and we'll be back in just a second, y'all. We're figuring it out. Things are going well. Everything's going to be fine. Uh, no one is on fire, and it's cool. All right, let's uh, give us just Okay, so um, I'm not sure what I'm at because I'm like, my provider, I think, is lagging. Um, it's my internet provider was down for like eight hours yesterday. Uh,
um, just to make it actually fit the pineapple. Um, so there's our door frame. Um, and then I brought in a vault door um, using Pixel Squid again, just a huge vault door. And uh, I basically am just going to place it inside the door frame here. Perfect. I'm going to put it up a little bit just so that it kind of is facing um, up. There we go. And then now I'm basically just going to add a, a layer mask here, uh, reveal all. And then just going to go around it. Because uh, since I have like a temp, a door template now, I can just go around it. Um, I'm going to put my hardness uh, up. And then I can just go around the, the door frame here. With, and you're basically uh, just with masking with a brush, right? Yeah, yeah. It's a, it, I'm on a I'm on a layer uh, a layer mask there. So um, you can just hold shift and go around this door frame if you want. And I think what's interesting uh, that not a lot of people know, especially that are beginning in Photoshop, is this is something called non-destructive workflow. Uh, and non-destructive workflow basically means instead of erasing that, we're kind of just hiding it, right? The mask makes sure that that isn't showing, but it's not gone, so we can bring it back if we need to. Yeah, bring it back at any time, because I, for somebody who has anxiety, I do like to go <laughs> go back and forth like all the time. That's uh, yeah, just like just in case. Yeah, I'm like you know, might run into something. So I'm actually going to be a little bit destructive here by rasterizing this layer. I the know, chaos. No, no. So uh, what I'm gonna do is because like since I. I kind of have the door frame. I want to get rid of these bottom corners here. So I'm just going to grab them and bring it up into the metal. Cool. And then it brings the, the metal down again. So that's the only destructive part about this. I don't really need that outside anymore. So that's why I'm like, I'm fine with being destructive. Um, and then I'm basically just going to double check. Sure. Nice. It's all straight there. And I'm going to grab the element and actually position it in the right spot here. Oh, I forgot to uh there's a whole nother piece the, yeah there's a whole nother piece Hiding. over here i forgot to lock the uh forgot to erase it apparently um uh, a great question um from fairy do you ever overthink your work sean do i ever overthink oh my god you're yeah you ask a person with anxiety if he overthinks 24 <laughs> seven yes, yes. Just yes, a constant state overthink. of overthinking. I don't know if there's yeah. another way of life. Like, is there any other kind of thinking? I use it as a pro, though, rather than a con. I mean, to overthink something is, it depends, right? Like, it could it could damage you, yes, if you think too much into it and or alter your ways based off of those thoughts. But if you are just kind of like, you know, if you use it as like a pro, such as like you can have thousands of ideas at your fingerprint, at uh, your fingertips in like five seconds if you did, if you need it. Yep. But it's can you handle those one, like five thousand thoughts all? all yeah. So it's a difference of like one. yeah. It's great that you have a lot of good ideas, and like you said, sometimes you need to work on multiple projects to keep those ideas flowing. Right. That it's not just like oh. Here's the project. It's like, oh, here are a bunch of projects with all of these ideas. Mm -hmm. I don't know why my perspective warp was way out there, but sometimes you got to do what you got to do. <laughs> um, Be Creative has a question. Uh, where do you get your inspiration? It seems like obviously this is from maybe a childhood of watching SpongeBob. Um, where does your inspiration kind of come from? So I am a huge, uh, I like to do ch a lot of charities and stuff like that. Um, when I was in school, uh, I always tried to do um, anti-bullying campaigns and stuff just by myself. Um, uh, well, I had to, like my roommates and stuff like that uh, help me set them up and everything like that. But we would kind of just randomly say, like we would wake up one day and say, yeah, let's uh, let's go do this positive thing for a mass amount of people. I think at one point we one time printed off 10,000 sticky notes that had compliments on them and we gave them um, to everybody in the school. Um, and it was just nice. Uh, and then they were told to like pass it on to somebody else and all that kind of stuff. Um, and 
that kind of stuff is always stuck with me like standing for things and like you know being um allowing my artwork to to shout really loud um because my voice is like really low because <laughs> i'm like I, have a, I, I back to the anxiety right i don't like to show um but my work likes to show so i figured that's my loudest voice is if i it, whatever idea i have in my mouth at the time i'm better off saying it through art because it can get a lot further that way um and it works uh, it actually, um, a lot of my like phrases that I say and, and uh, metaphors and all these things, I can now look back on them and I can say like, ah, yeah, like, I said something smart then. Um, and my work is kind of like documenting that for me. So although, yeah, there's like, you know, this, the pineapple, the SpongeBob in here, the main thing that I wanted to stand for and why I created it is because like, you know, there shouldn't be trash in our oceans um do you see trash in your bathtub if not then there shouldn't, shouldn't be in the, in the oceans either um thankfully never uh, so it's just yeah stuff that i i like to stand uh for and all that um yeah. i just don't believe that that's a good place for trash to end up is uh in the ocean uh where nobody can see it and or pick it up and or get rid of it the real way anymore right it's yeah. just drifting and it's cool that the there. inspiration comes from uh like wanting to say something because i think that there are the different kinds of inspiration right that people are inspired by like a look or a feel or like oh i'm just inspired by like the colors and so it's cool that it's oh i'm inspired by a cause or a, a, a message and then you get to apply all of your creative uh prowess to it that uses. i think it's yeah it's an interesting uh kind of dynamic to make something that I think ends up being new and interesting rather than being kind of iterative on things that already exist. Yeah. It's like the, the other side of it, you know, um, because there's a lot of people who design the side that you see a lot, but there's not a lot of people who design the side that you don't see a lot. Yes. Which is normally, um, the side that we don't really want to see <laughs> most of the time people don't like to necessarily see those uh, sides of things but yep. you know it's good to uh good to always keep in mind and stuff like this like i like i also like to um document uh like some of my um just some of like life events and all that stuff through through war uh work as well right um like the virus you know i don't like to bring it up myself because i have like anxiety but um but really like to document that and to put it down on paper um is good because at the end of the day like you know it's not something that i want to brag about but it's something that i want to remember yep um, and here you're trying to kind of just find the right perspective and place for that to look like it's kind of sitting in the scene right it's a lot of kind of tweaking and moving yeah i so i i always find like holes basically so right here is i assume that was a hole um and this is a non to me this is not important this dip um this however like the texture of the pineapple or all these like little like sections those are pretty important because they kind of look like shells you know which mm -hmm. is cool so it adds to like the whole underwater vibe so if you can put it in inside one of these gutters it blends it a little bit more than if i were to just place it on top of one of these things so you're basically um, looking for seams yeah, yeah exactly Smart. yeah that that's the word i was looking for um <laughs> but i also don't like to put anything kind of like perfect you know because nothing's ever perfect really yep. i mean even if you do take the perfect photo there could be power lines in it <laughs> yes <laughs> and exactly. it's like dang it yeah <laughs> right? and i power think uh, i actually just got finished teaching a, a class about lightroom and we made the distinction between Lightroom and Photoshop that like Lightroom is for enhancing the real world and Photoshop is for augmenting it. And I think today, like we're going to the furthest side of like, this is full augmentation of something that is real. <laughs> well, to be fair, and I don't want to step on anybody who uses Lightroom, but I'm about to say it. <laughs> this is Lightroom right here. Oh, wait, uh, in filters camera raw it's so filter. true it's so that's true yeah yep 100 <laughs> so, percent. yep 
you don't technically need the software unless you're really bad at file organization. Uh, then it's real. It's pretty useful if you take like a mass amount of photos and you want to edit all those at once and all that. But really, Camera Raw, like I still put my composites and everything through that, but I don't have to open up another software. And at the Just end of the day, my yep. computer's like, I love you. Yes, the thing that see, that. the thing that gets me is Lightroom on mobile is so powerful. Like using Lightroom on iPad or iPhone oh, yeah. is so good. Uh, it just makes it look like you have just like a fancy camera with you all the time. And you're like, this is my iPhone six. <laughs> Believe it or not, I have still yet to use um, like, like Lightroom or uh, any of the mobile apps really. Oh, they're um, fun. It, it's because an iPad in Canada is like ridiculous because our dollars like monopoly money. So we don't really, um, <laughs> we don't really uh, have much use for it. It's like uh, when you receive like a chocolate dollar kind of. Yeah. Same value almost yep. in a sense. So here. Uh, sometimes the chocolate dollar actually is almost better. Um, <laughs> From the Pixel Squid plugin, problem. you're just dragging stuff in. And then from there, you can use the settings to readjust angles and that kind of stuff, right? Exactly, yeah. So I take, like, just, you know, some side elements, like, uh, you know, windows and all this. I know that this doesn't look like SpongeBob's, like, actual window or anything like that. But really, at the end of the day, like, did anybody look at what windows, like, you know, like, what they actually look like or anything like that? Yeah, and like you said earlier, so it's I more about selling the concept. Utilizing the yeah exactly so i think utilizing some of these uh just the you can turn them gray or whatever at the end of the day which is what i did with this you uh you can see here since it's a smart object i can just turn on and off the colors again but i'm not blending anything yet notice how i haven't blend like how, how i haven't even touched the brushes or anything really um i don't i don't blend up until i have everything like aligned as a perspective first and then once I have most of that stuff out, um, that's when I start to blend because then I can see like the overall lighting and then shut it down um, on all the other elements. Um, I could have duplicated this object here, but with Pixel Squid, it's best to um, create, add a new element, even if you're using the same one, um, because then you just get that control again, where you can move this element over here. If I were to duplicate this one on this side and uh, try to rotate it over here, then this one would also rotate as yep. well. Yeah, I was gonna the, say you, the first one that I had. Yeah, when you get things linked up too much, it it gets to where you change one thing and then a whole bunch of things change. Especially with like smart objects, you go in and change one color, and suddenly there's like seven things that are different colors. You're like, oh, oh. no, I linked the wrong things. <laughs> And you're just like in After Effects now trying to like get your files all like aligned and ready for animation. And you're like, what happened to all my layers? Yes, exactly. <laughs> what, what I do? Exactly. <laughs> I've been trying to bring my work into After Effects to like animate it and everything to now do my composite work basically directly in After Effects because that I found that that was like the fastest way almost wow. is to basically make these all individual elements, save them all, and then bring them all in <laughs> as like one, as all individual elements, and then assort the, the composite there. That's um, wild. But it's easy with Photoshop because like, once you bring in the PSD, um, then all you have all your layers, right? Um, and then if you edit one of those layers, then it basically, um, it will edit it in the After Effects document for you. Yep. So uh, you never really have that connection between your files. You never have to like go go back and like restart, which is like the worst in animation because restarting an animation is just tedious. I have to have auto save on like recovery and everything. Yep. Um, and so just for... I've aligned some of the. Uh, just for everybody that's watching, we are doing a little feedback session at the end of this stream uh, over on Discord. If you want to join the Photoshop Discord, um, you can do that over on the side. Um, uh, all right, it looks like we're having more technical difficulties. All right, uh, let's go ahead and 
flip over and we'll be back in just a second everyone yeah, I'll, I'll definitely be, be there that's in the acc right are we having connection errors again yeah Yo.
Hello, welcome back to the stream. Uh, we were broadcasting from obviously underwater at Pineapple uh, at Pineapple <laughs> House, so the connection's a little yeah. wonky. The sea, the tides, yeah. there's some yeah, there's just snow sludge flowing stuff. through. Yeah, all those things. Um, welcome back. <laughs> we're here with Sean. Sean, do you want to just give a quick overview, who you are, what we're doing, all that fun stuff, and then we'll hop right back in. So my name is Sean, and I am a composite artist. Uh, I basically design pieces uh that kind of show like a different perspective of things um by merging photos 3d elements vectors you name it i merge it all together to try and make something real but also to resemble a message that i'm trying to get out so today we're working on spongebob's house um actually using pixel squid which is like a 3d library plugin that is available on the official extensions, uh, Photoshop extensions. So if you search Pixel Squid, it's there. Um, and then you can just add it for free to your Photoshop. Um, super helpful for situations uh, when you don't want to crop anything out. And, uh, and yeah, so we're here right now. We've um, kind of put together, um, I'll just hide some of the elements. So we first basically, um, added a pineapple in here. And then we cropped off the bottom, um, making it curved so that it matched the sea floor. Uh, and then we added all these other elements through Pixel Squid just to make it more house-like. Uh, well, more SpongeBob house-like. Um, we've got the fancy windows. So we are just right now worrying about the perspective of the elements. We're not really worrying about um, blending or any of that stuff yet because that's more of the technical smaller detail stuff. So when you start to do that midway through your piece, you'll find that that becomes like an endless loop um, until all of your assets are, are in there. Um, and as you're working on this, like, how are you finding the perspectives? Is it really just eyeballing to like, see if it looks right? Or is there any like mathematical, is it just like, cool, this looks right? Uh, so there is a, a mathematical actually. Um, so you have to keep in mind shape really at all times. So this, like the pineapple isn't just flat. Um, so it's not just like, you know, just a, an oval. It's more of a, a, a football. So you have to keep in mind that that also has a radius around around it, right? So your elements that you put on fr in front of it will also follow that curve. Um, so as you notice, like the windows, they're not just flat and they're not just sitting there making the whole asset look weird. They're, they're angled so that they do show you that curve. Um, a lot of some of the elements are not true like there yet um they're not fully at that curve but that's because i like to bring it into liquify when i make the whole thing a smart object and then i like to warp the perspective around from that point we'll get into yes. that later on uh, that's also a very helpful tool as well so right now what i'm just worrying about is i'm just gonna focus on the lighting which is up here and something I like to do normally, which helps me out, and I do tell a lot of the artists in the art club to do this as well, which is mark your like lighting, um, basically, right? So this is where your lighting is coming down. Oh. Don't worry, I'm not gonna keep those green lights or anything like that, unless you want me to keep the green lights. It's up to you. Uh, <laughs> but, but that's how I know where the lighting is coming from. Um, this being a curve, right, uh, or a curve, you would note that the light basically stops here so that's why it it would be it's okay to have all the shadows down in here because it's curved up so it's stopping the uh oh, so it's stopping the um light rays from touching the bottom uh because it's not in front it's not in back we're putting it right directly above um yeah, and, and you're seeing basically where the light and the object collide then on the other side is obviously going to be a shadow even though it may not be there now we can add it in kind of with our imaginary light situation yeah our our beautiful uh lighting if i ever sent this to a client they would be like no <laughs> but the way i like to show them exactly uh the lighting i'll use my uh studio lights that i have and I'll put a battery in a box because if you put like a, an object or even a coffee cup, it works. You probably have plenty of those. Um, you put that inside a box, 
then you're kind of imagining your your canvas already because your canvas isn't just flat it's not just a piece of paper it's a room right yes um that's what i like to picture as is a 3d kind of room and then you add things up front things up back to make it more uh more have more depth to it um so right now i'm going to just edit some of the uh the lighting around here and i basically do that by just cl clip masking um some soft light into um the bottom and top um, i use black the black and white brushes for this but i like to set my opacity down to 10 percent. i know <laughs> i know no, you're like, well then you can just really stack it yeah exactly right full control um my teacher taught me that 25 percent is good but i'm just like uh no i can't do 25 i i can't take a chance like that that's still pretty big for me yep. <laughs> so i'll now i'll just brush in here and i'll just kind of keep going on until uh, i i match the lighting in a sense uh to what i i'm trying to achieve so i'll show you what oh wait we might not even be in the right oh yeah we're not even in the right element right now and this is just like painting with like watercolor, right? That we're having to build it up so it gets darker and darker and darker. With each click, it's doing a little bit of an augment. Uh, and we just keep clicking until it's just right. Yeah, just, yeah, just right. You, you just kind of see, you have to completely eyeball it. Like, I'm not going to say that there's a hidden technique or anything behind this because there really is, well, I mean, actually something that could really, really help you with this stuff is understanding um, film photography. Um, so my teacher, what he did was we all brought film cameras to, uh, uh, to school and, um, basically he just, he put our cameras up on the shelf and he said, you can't get it back down until you take a picture without a camera. So we had to create pinhole cameras, which is yep. like this soup can and, camera we, obscura. and yep. we literally took a picture that way. And that's how you received your camera um was awesome. following that step so i definitely I recommend right. always doing it like that because if you want to understand lighting and how um powerful it really is um then that's the best way to do it um, yeah i was gonna say like uh photography right by its work is light writing and so this is probably more photography than actual photography like what we're doing now is technically more light writing than yeah. photography actually is like we're yeah technically. we're technically lighting more than, than well you should have seen the old way though of how like i used to do this um before photoshop um I never really went into the whole digital side of things. I literally did photo manipulation through using the enlargers and um, and chemicals, like having chemicals all over your hands at all times, basically. Wow. Masking, cutting it, like cutting it out that way. And that process is very tedious. So thank thank goodness that Photoshop is a thing now. Um, I mean, I was it was a thing at the time, but I we just went right into the film because. Uh, Photoshop was was for professionals, but now it's for and now anybody can uh, hop in there because there's just so many resources online, right? Yep. Um, so it's kind of crazy how it's all all developed. I should probably name my layers here, by the way. Um, I noticed that I've been just doing um, hiding and unhiding. So I'm gonna mer or create a smart object with the windows. So now they're both basically together. And I'm going to create way, any, another smart object. Any augmentation you do now to that smart object will then affect both of them. So it's like, oh, we want them to be desaturated so they turn gray. Instead of having to do two adjustment layers, you can do one adjustment layer that applies to both of them, which is nice. Yeah. And if I ever need to go back and adjust one again, I just double click that file and it yep. open up in another window and I make the adjustments that way normally. Um, but it's just easier because when you're clip masking like light and stuff, then you can really get the like the full uh, the full approach that you're trying to trying to achieve, which is like basically going around the edges like this, right? You just want to yep. follow the edges, um, and that could be the correct lighting right there. Maybe that that, that looks good, fine. Um, I know that there are different ways to do this kind of lighting. Um, and I know I've seen people do like an, uh, a, an overlay layer at 50% opacity and then kind of dodge and burn highlights and shadows. Is there kind of like, this is the way you learned it. Is there benefits to other ways or is this um, kind of just like, this is how you've done it. And so this is how you kind of do it. 
I, I don't know. I just personally like to do it this way because sometimes like lighting isn't always the same like shape in a sense. And it's not always going to, um, I just find that this is just more strategic when it comes down yep. to um, tr that accuracy of things. So totally you have a little that, bit yep. more uh, understanding that um, that this is light and you can kind of have overall control of just that specific element um, rather than having, yeah, the, the layer modes on top, the adjustments and, and doing it this way. I do use adjustments. Uh, don't get me wrong but i normally do it for like an overall right like if i wanted to darken both of these that's when i would play around with it i wouldn't really yep. go in and start erasing and everything um because i can like just change like the tones of all this stuff as well like if i want like the uh the windows like a different color now i can uh kind of make them like blue you know yep on the side have that control still it's just this is just how I've kind of trained myself. I don't really have a, um, that professional, like Benny Productions technique that everybody uh, probably follows. Uh, I don't really have that. Um, I just like to do kind of like my own technique and um, my main tool overall is my layers panel at all times. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> I believe that that's the most important tool in Photoshop and understanding that once you fully understand this layers panel, then you just have like a lot of capabilities of, of taking things like a little bit further in a sense. Um, you can almost like, I can almost edit a whole image through here without even looking at this sometimes. And, and I'll know that it's all functioning differently and, and all that. Um, you just understand your layers elements. and yeah, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna try and focus on this door now so i'm going to just kind of uh, we've already merged this down as a smart object both these uh, at the start there so i'm just kind of like adjusting some of the light lightness to match kind of this dark right here because this is our my darkest color right so everything that's really dark i have to go to that depth and then bring that depth back up again yep <laughs> and i, I love your yeah, you're looking at values and depths and not necessarily color because what's like what's black may not be black like in this composition your black is probably really like a really dark blue oh yeah and so paying attention to the values instead of the actual color is so important mm -hmm. so there's still blue in here for sure um because any color because really this isn't the correct lighting um we actually have to bring um another blue like layer back up there after yep. but i'm going to basically create a group uh, and then I duplicate this group and I hide this. I know it seems like a little bit, like that whole process seemed like a little bit redundant, but now I have the smart layer, but I also have all this stuff in the same um, document. So I, I don't do have to this, open up another yes. one. I do the same thing that like my layers, there's probably three times as many layers as I'm showing. So I'm like, I just want these for contingency. Like I just want to have the layers <laughs> yeah. there just in case. Yeah, just to make it look a little bit bigger too. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah exactly. Like, yeah. I'm a pro editor. More yeah, complex. Okay. Look at how many layers I got. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to bring this uh, blue back up here again. It's always good to reuse elements. You don't really need to um, utilize, like you don't really need to go and find like the C and do everything again. And I like to, um do a soft light over it so see how it's like the tones are starting to slowly bring it in to the piece now yep. it's kind of kind of interesting um so another thing i like to do is i like to select my layer uh select inverse and then i also like i like to hide um my selection and then you're thinking why did he do that and uh it's because now i can go this is non-destructive um, blurring. So this is how you blur something without um, dis destroying the edges. So now if I wanted to blur all of this, I can only blur the edges of my um, piece. So something like that wouldn't necessarily be sharp. So this shouldn't be sharp down here. So now That's you just go so over smart. with uh, with the blur tool and you literally have the mask, right? So you're blurring the mask. You're not even blurring the layer. Yep. And, and it, 
Yeah, it gives you the soft yeah. edge without having to do like a soft brush that might get yeah. wonky. It's just like that perfect, like, cool, it's just enough softness to look like it's in the actual scene. Yeah, and then you can get the little hairs on the on the outside. See so, yeah, how that kind of like just made it like a little bit more uh, blended yep. in there. See, they're so sharp on this side, but then you just go in and you're like, all right, just fixing that up. Especially when something's already masked out or like you have it, it's a 3D object that you don't have to worry about like any line on the edge that's been masked weird or like a little bit of white space. It's like, nope, it's clear. So I know that I can blur it out and it just goes into transparency. Yeah, it's cool because I can make my brush as big as possible if I want to get rid of all this. And now I can just go over this whole thing and it's only getting the edges. I don't yep. even have, it's not be getting anything on the inside that's it's only getting that so edges. cool that's <laughs> so cool so that's that's my little that's my little trick that i like to do um with feathering stuff uh let me show you what it looked like so see how how sharp it is and then we'll pardon oh oh yeah that's that's because i uh was clicking uh, off my layers here so and i'll enable uh, this layer now, and then I'll show you the difference. So see how sharp it is? And then boom, it just like kind yep. of brought it back down. And that's just me doing my blur uh, over my mask. And yeah, so now we are going to add our um, our shadow here. Um, so right here is a highlight spot. That wouldn't exist because the house is actually there. So we, that spot can't be there. Yes. Um, so. I'm gonna destroy this stock photo a little bit, but I'm basically just gonna patch that just out. Patch it out, yep. Uh, how often? Issues. How often do you, are you doing? This is such a like designery thing, but how often are you doing like hand motions in your brain to like show things? Like whenever I'm looking at lighting, I'm like, okay, so there's one here and there's something here, and then like, and my hands are just doing like these weird. And I'm like, I'm trying to understand the lighting a little bit better, but it's all in the hands. Sometimes I like stick sticky notes to like my screen. I know it's not a good idea. Nobody do that. Probably it's probably not a good idea to put <laughs> sticky notes on your screen, but sometimes I do it. Um, when I want to like align something and, and all that kind of stuff. Sometimes I even like, this is sometimes my alignment. I will literally grab like a, a square from this side and touch either either side. Oh, I do this all the time, all the time. <laughs> and then you would duplicate it. Yes. Bring it over and be like, yeah, that's not center. And then <laughs> now you just bring your, your whole element. Yep. Oh yeah, and I know like even in Illustrator, there's like smart guides and rulers, and I'm like, what about two rectangles? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what about two? Yeah, two exactly the same size rectangles. That's yes, that are going to get immediately deleted. <laughs> yeah, and I think that that's pretty smart. I mean, like, I, not many people are probably uh, doing that technique. Um, so since we know that this is an oval here, we can uh, just assume that our shadowing is probably going to be an oval as well. So I just drew that randomly. That was not accurate whatsoever. So don't, don't assume that I'm just like amazing at drawing rectangles to perspective. But let's give it a go. Pretty close. Uh, oh, that actually was pretty, pretty close. Yeah. I'm going to bring it up and then I make this um, black. Uh, make this black. And then I'm going to basically just blur it. Blur it away um, forever. Yes. Yeah, let's, let's convert that to a smart object too, because you might as well. Um, and this is like the ultimate hack for shadows is I think a lot of people think that they need to like paint in shadows or like get a soft brush. And it's like, make a shape of whatever the thing is, if you're looking down and then just blur it out and then you're good. And then like change the <laughs> opacity if you need to, like, it's so much easier to think about it of like, what is the perspective from where the light is coming? And then I just make a black shape and blur it. Sometimes you can even bring it into like your, uh. Oh, I accidentally released my clipping mask, but sometimes you can break it into like this object. I like to do uh, my soft light. This is this is a little bit too intense right now because um, I've already adjusted a lot of coloring. So using black now is not really um, the best option. I should grab this blue right up, like this dark blue, even like what you were mentioning before, how it's not really like, noticeable but yeah uh black does um, absorb most of the coloring around so when it comes down to um 
adding shadows and all that, it's actually going to be like the same color as what they normally are. So this would be like a shadow back here, technically. Yep. And that's the darkest point that I have is this. So I have to bring all these darker points up to that. And how I do that is I just kind of like, I take that color and create a new layer. And then I just set this to lighten. And then I'll just kind of like tone it down a little bit. Yep. And you're starting to get that atmosphere by doing that and giving it like, it feels like there's something between the camera and the object, which is what the real world is. Yep. A sandwich. The real world is a giant sandwich. A giant sandwich. I also <laughs> um, think like this is, I think a general rule of thumb that like, especially when you're doing photo manipulation, I think that there's almost 0% of the time that you use hundred percent black because it kills oh, yeah. any other color. Like, I think you will just never use it. Like I, the furthest I'll go is like 98 because I want to like be able to put some grain on it, but still be dark. But I think hundred mm. percent black like, just doesn't exist in the real world. <laughs> and so I, it just- I set it to that, but then I'm just like, like I'm not using hundred uh, percent. I'll set it down to like opacity 10%. Like the black is at hundred percent, but my brush opacity is down to like five. My flow is at like 10%. I'm yep. just doing like, small little tiny little adjustments um so i'm actually gonna just brush this uh shadow in at the bottom here um which is the easiest way to do it over here um just a little bit more control uh with the door and everything the door frame yep i like you're changing in between doing perfect objects shapes and doing brush because it, it does need that like hand brushed somewhere on it. I feel like to feel like it's real. If everything's too like, oh, that's a circle that's blurred and here's a square that's whatever. Like having that hand on touch of like painting in some of the light really gives it another level. Mm -hmm. Ooh. I'm just gonna try and see if I can, oh, there we go. Find the blue tone here. And it's really starting to feel grounded like it is blocking the light that's coming and not like it's a shadow, if that makes any sense. Like it doesn't look like it's just a slotter that's shopped on. It looks like it actually is blocking light that's coming from the top because it has that nice blue in it that is reflected right below it. Mm -hmm. And a nice little like hack for really um, bringing that that color in, uh, in a sense, would be like just to met, like notice your highlights down here in a sense. Um, you want to kind of get rid of them, right? Uh, this one's okay. This would be a highlight right here. I know it's like very small, like right here, but that is literally giving me full like notice of where the light is, uh, it, which is yep. like right above over here. And this might not exist because this, this to here. So this, like it might not make it over there unless the light's coming from up here. So I, I think I might keep it this time only because I still need to warp some of these windows and stuff yeah. uh, in here. Um, but yeah, now we can go into our pineapple here. What's nice too is with this composition, you don't really have to think about any like light bounce of like, oh cool, no light is bouncing off any other things to like affect object. It's just like, it's water. So it will be very even across the board. It's the ultimate diffuser of just light from the top and diffused all the way across. Yeah. <laughs> And I'm going to um, just grab the door here and I'm going to make that like a little tad bit darker. Only because it's uh, not really matching. Uh, uh, this would kind of cover it up in the lighting. Um, so when I click save over here, it will edit this eventually. Perfect. There we go. That was pretty fast, actually. That was probably the fastest that that's ever, ever processed for me. <laughs> Normally I'm working with like massive files. I did size this one down like very dramatically today just so that we didn't get through any like lag or anything. Yep. Um, but yeah, now I basically just bring it into uh, Liquify here. And this is when I start playing around with um, a lot of like the uh, perspectives of how I laid out these 3D elements. Um, Liquify does take me a little while sometimes to get in. It's a very powerful tool. There's a lot to it. Um, but it's perfect for perspective. So I like to use like a little forward warp tool here. Um, and then we're just going to adjust like, you know, the window back into back into place, maybe bring it out. All that I think about whenever I see this is like 
having and this is the weirdest but like my composition turns into jello and i just use my fingers to like push things like that's all i think about of like <laughs> is like yeah. i have cast the design in jello and now i must move it now i'm just gonna like so this is the the inner part right so that's uh like the curve to it um so that's why i kind of like pushed it out a little bit more yeah, um, just to give it a little bit more time. shape uh so let's show you what it looked like uh before see how the windows are just like straight and all that and over here this is almost straight i did i did kind of like rotate it a little nicely so i kind of set up the future my future sean um but then uh when you turn on the liquify it basically just moves that back up that back up again so that it's actually angled like that it used to be angled like this now it's against like the curve going up to the top um so yeah and then now it's just kind of like i just kind of wing it with the lighting um so it's not always the same because there's so many different objects right things could be transparent or things could be like slightly transparent like a like a plastic container or something so when it comes down to um doing a lot of the lighting I do like to really create a lot of my lighting uh, myself, which is me kind of setting like an overlay um, underneath my color layers so that it's also going to adjust. And then I'll just go in and, and these are just going to be my highlights first right up here, just just to bring it in uh, a little bit more um, for the lighting up here, because I still have to bring that forward. Uh, this is this lighting is still behind the object. It needs yeah. to be brought in front of it still. Um, so I'm just gonna kind of like adjust um, some of the lighting of this door here so that it kind of like casts a little bit more of a shadow. And it's so interesting. And I think, uh, do you know, have you watched uh, Wade Acuff at all? He streams on Behance, he's like a digital painter. I don't think I've, I've seen a lot of digital painters on Behance, but I don't think I've seen uh, them. Yeah, so he basically works on like a 50% gray, and then his digital painting is basically just sculpting with the shadows and the highlights. And oh, yeah. I, so and yeah, he was explaining kind of the thought process, and that's kind of where we are now, is it's not about like necessarily like oh it's brighter here and darker there it's about like okay let's find the dimensions to like start to sculpt this piece so it feels like one thing and not multiple pieces yeah i'm actually um editing the exact same way um but i took out the gray um the gray is easy you can just do alt click on this layer and like you know overlay and fill with soft or whatever yep. but i just don't i just noticed that really the white and black brush are the things that are making the alterations. So I just skip right to that part. I said, I don't need the gray. Yeah. Well, and especially no when you're not here. painting something from scratch, you're augmenting the things. It makes mm -hmm. sense to just have that like, cool, we're going to paint the whites and blacks on and like augment this stuff that's underneath. Yeah. Uh, and I'm going to kind of just tone this one down a little bit because the uh, the blacks were a little bit weird, but I'm going to put some um, exposure uh just a little bit on here. I love how 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 much of this as well is just like feel and vibe that it's like ah oh, it needs to feel like a little bit like lighter so it's brighten it like yeah. of being able to for you translate like an emotion into like a digital tool. Uh, I think it's so cool. <laughs> yeah, it's just it's really cool like just to tell stories really. Um, yeah. And I what like. My my grandfather has the award for for storyteller in my family, so I I don't get that award. So it's just nice that I can do it through a different way, right? Because he normally takes uh, the spotlight when it comes down to stories and 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 doing all that stuff. So I just let him uh, be the storyteller. Um, I have connected a lot of pieces to him though, which is which is cool. Um, I, I actually, he was a beekeeper. So I tried to uh, create like a bee apparel brand at one point, um, which was kind of fun. Um, and then uh, all the packaging around that bee apparel, you could just throw it on the ground. And I know that's promoting something weird, but all of it actually grew wildflowers and oh, it all cool. decomposed and everything for the bees. So wherever you dropped it, you were actually 
physic like actually helping the bees right then and there you, we weren't telling you that you were you could see it happening um and that's w w my my trust thing when it comes down to uh charities and stuff like that i don't really necessarily always know where things are going um but uh but i like to know when thing where things are going most of the time <laughs> otherwise i'm just like where am i where? i have no idea where <laughs> I'm just kind of like fixing some of the highlights. You notice there was a highlight in here, but it's good to just like see how you could just brush over it and like get rid of it. And yep. it almost brings it back to that, that same perspective again. I was going to say, this is kind of the magic eye portion of the process. If you remember those books that like, you're trying to like, I spy kind of things that you're looking, you're like, all right, what looks off? And then you're like, <laughs> okay, how do I fix that now? Like, what does it make sense? And how do we make it make sense? The I Spy books, honestly, those are my favorite um, by far. Oh, yeah. Um, I actually only have one working eye, um, believe it or not. It's this one right here. That's my only, like, I can edit the whole time like this, and it won't, it doesn't impact me. Oh, wow. Um, so, <laughs> I like how you said creative eye. I'm like, yes. Yes, creative that's eye, it. Not creative that's eye. It. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't have a creative eye. Eyes, I have a creative eye. That's all you need. Um, pardon? That's all you need. Oh yeah, yeah, it's exactly right. Then, then I can wear like an eye patch, right? Like eye patches are pretty cool. Uh, I get, I think. I mean, if you choose to wear one, right? I mean, pirates chose to wear one. So I was gonna say, yeah, so it's. I mean, perfect for SpongeBob. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly, perfect for SpongeBob. But I'm just basically right now just doing removing highlights, finer detail, all that kind of stuff. Going through um, the element here, just kind of. This is basically doing like a, a dodge and burn, like what you were saying, but just more uh, strategically and understanding all the texture in the piece. Because the pineapple has a lot of texture, um, yep. so each each one of these ridges is taking is getting like highlights on it. So you need to understand how to get rid of those uh, highlights, what they are, um, you know, yep. what and could be. Instead of cloning out texture, right? We could just like clone from a different place. Like when I think about texture, I'm like, oh, I'm thinking, you know, facial blemishes or like weird pores. But here it's like, oh, the texture is actually coming from the highlights and the shadows. So if we eliminate those, we can hide a lot of that texture that we don't want by just taking out the highlights. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you run into stuff like this, though, where you will end up getting rid of that probably through shadows or something or... Uh, but see how there's like an overlay. So yep. this is supposed to be over top, but th this is over top for some reason, but this little thing is supposed to go over top of that. Yeah. Kind of confusing, but I'm sure I'll figure it out. I'll probably just end up clip masking something here. I don't yep. know. Masking do you, it out. Do you get overwhelmed when you're like looking at the overall process of there's a million things to do or do you try to look like each little thing you're like okay cool we're doing this now then we're moving here then we're moving there are you thinking individually or is the whole thing yeah, at the same it, time individually so yeah. I, I i do it step by step rather than overwhelming myself and i found that like that was the best bet for me probably because um and keeping your layers down clean um i know i'm not naming my layers I'm pretty sure no designer names their layers, but <laughs> maybe there is some out there. Um, but I like to name groups. So I'll I'll name this like pineapple or whatever, but this is the whole pineapple now. Yeah. Um, and that to me makes, makes sense as, as one uh, element. So now I'm just going to uh, add all of these things in there too. Perfect. I think I accidentally just put those on top though. Yeah, I'll do the same thing with instead of working with individual names, I'll name like, this is like the zone. Like my layers and groups are all <laughs> named with like, this is like the zone of things that are in this folder, like not necessarily the specific things. <laughs> I just find that it's just like so much easier just to con consistently create smart objects and to have those kind of like yep around your your composite um it's just easier uh when it's one over this like this is confusing <laughs> this to yep. me is huge confusing um so yeah and then and then see as you notice like the shadowing is kind of 
kind of a little bit weird over there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna add um, just some cover ups in, in here. <laughs> Yes, some some uh, extra element. I love that it is like, oh, we're trying to like build the world and add in some extra elements, and it's like, no, I'm just trying to cover these edges. <laughs> yeah, I'm just I'm just trying to get rid of my my terrible crops. Right? And this stuff is like people like that this stuff being in the foreground, right? Like they don't mind it. Um, and it gives you uh, more dimension. Mm, it uh, gives you something to look at uh, other than just staring at this. Um, but yeah, that's basically, so this is a nice shadow, shadowing right there, but just this was not, not too nice. Yep. Uh, this look feels at how like many the most, objects there are in yeah, Pixels. It feels like space. the most Spongebob-y, like, plants in the sea I've ever seen. I like, know, it, right? <laughs> like, that's why I was like, wow, uh, Pixel Squid helped me out again. Uh, right? It reminds me of, like, Beaker from the Muppets a little bit, like, <laughs> under the <yes>. ocean. <laughs> so true, so true, yeah. That's what it was reminding me of. Because I looked at it and I'm like, that maybe, reminds yeah. me of something. I couldn't think of it at the time, but I'm going uh, and as we, live today to understand that. Uh, as we continue to add these pieces in, if you are hanging out with us, make sure you come and hang out in Discord immediately after the stream. We'll be uh, getting some feedback from y'all, just hanging out and chatting. Um, so make sure you join us there. Uh, Cody is going to drop that link for you. Go join the Discord. It's a great place to be. It's going to be super fun. Um, we'll be there drinking coffee and just like just vibing so if you want to vibe with us come vibe yeah come vibe i'll be in there too yes. um it's like the after party yeah i uh i'm in the I, that's the ac that's the uh community server right the um, yes acc yeah i think so yes there will be yeah. a, a link that exists that will answer that question but yes i think so <laughs> yeah that's a that's a fun server um all right so i'm just going to now start bringing um so these assets are pretty good. I'm I'm not going to put this there. I'm gonna bring make that one smaller in in the distance. I'm gonna add this here though because I thought that that looked pretty cool in that spot. Um, but I'm gonna put two of them. Um, I know I said not to duplicate them, but that's okay. Um, nobody notices the edges because we kind of I kind of just like blur it out, and uh, I'll rotate this one to make it look a little bit different. Perfect. And now I'm going to bring some of the elements up in front of the tree or in front of the house here. These aren't blended or anything like that yet. So keep in mind, they're going to look a little bit uh, copy and pasted until I uh, until I align all my perspectives and then I go yep. in and, and do all that. And here it's again, that kind of just checking the vibe of like, oh, I feel like we need something here. I feel like we need something there to where these could all be interchanged, really. It's just like, we need something there in the composition to mm -hmm. cover something, to add a visual interest kind of thing, right? Yeah, and what I really like about it to be, like the most about uh, working with these assets is like, let's just say, you know, you accidentally use like two of the same asset, right? It's cool, since it's 3D, you could just rotate it over here, right. and then it just rotates over there for you. So you're oh, like, all right, different I didn't even asset. Think about that, yeah, that it's like, <laughs> it's the same thing, but now it's different because you. It over. <laughs> yeah, nobody will, nobody will notice. Nobody will. <laughs> what's that like thing that's going on right that? No one will even know that, yes. that like TikTok or something. How will they know? Um, so I'm just gonna add some more of this stuff just to bring the yellow back up in here again. Uh, I'm not gonna put too many assets out front um, compared to my other SpongeBob house. I think that uh, this one's going to be a little bit more simplistic, which is going to be nice. Uh, it's crazy and then maybe we'll add fish to this one. Oh, yay. Instead of trash, it's fish. Yeah, exactly. We'll actually make that. it like a good perspective, like the real perspective. There yes. we go. We'll go back to the other perspective. Yes. Um, this shouldn't be a pineapple. Actually, no, pineapple is okay. This shouldn't be metal, though. Um, if we were gonna do like an eco-friendly, um, we could do we could do like a um like a like a little piece of bamboo, like a little, bamboo. <laughs> like a little piece of bamboo. We could do Beyond Meat doors and burgers. How about yes, that? Let's that. just make we'll it do Beyond. That. Yes, plant-based <laughs> plant pineapple. <laughs> I I love how photorealistic all of these models look on Pixel Squid. That like I would think that you just had cropped this out from a photo. But it's like, no, it's a 3D model. Like, it, it just doesn't look 3D model-y to me. And my brain 3D models look a certain way that this is like, no, it's pretty photorealistic. 
there are some where it's just like like I've used like a San, a Santa Claus um, one where um, it it was a little bit plastic looking. That's what they normally look like. Is that it almost looks like an action figure, except yeah. it's like it's not. <laughs> it's trying to be a person or something. So there are some asses like that, but it all always depends on who on the artist, right? Um, yep. Pixel Squid being like a huge library. Um, there's a lot of different artists on there, so you can't find it that way there's always another way or, or another artist doing it in the, a more realistic sense um so i find that the trees and stuff they're really good on pixel squid uh let's see let's actually see if i have a tree inside my library here um Ooh, water tree. actually check this out this is a house Ooh, water house uh, that's a pretty good house i know right that's, that's what i'm thinking right yeah like that's a pretty good house. And like the fact that you're like, okay, I just want it like, you know, like over here, we can, we can even put this under, under water, right? Like SpongeBob has an actual house now. Um, yeah. And then maybe we'll put like uh, something up there. Sometimes my, um, it depends on my document. There we go. Perfect. Depends on how many things I've clicked on. But if you have like too many objects clicked, you could get like lost with this, right? Because if I click this now, it wants to edit my the other element so sometimes i'll go in and i'll just kind of make that into a new smart object and then that's what kind of puts that like pixel squid block up so that you don't have to always preload this and you could focus on your your current element it's really uh it's really helpful um you of course it's really helpful that you can keep going back to your assets and rotating them at any at any please at any angle you want but for me sometimes like I drag and click all over the place and my mouse speed is like really high. So it's like, sometimes I move an asset, uh, yep. weird. Um, but yeah, like they're pretty good. Like this isn't even at its highest resolution right now. So, um, this is, uh, they all import low because, uh, you know, you obviously don't want it like the highest, um, quality, but if you do make it high quality, just check out like all these, like, look at that like yep. how clear that went like that's that's pretty high quality that that looks like a real house that's wild um, so it's just insane like the the stuff that you can do with pixel squid yeah um oh another real house here on our artwork <laughs> a house for a sponge under the sea <laughs> yeah exactly. i don't even see the there's, difference <laughs> yeah yeah exactly there's no difference and Sp and spongebob's house is a is a inspiration to a lot of house builders today yes. probably Probably, there is probably one construction worker trying to make a pineapple house. You got there, or it probably already is a thing. Oh, I'm sure uh, it exists somewhere. Yes, absolutely. So I'm just going to tone these down because this is in the shadowed part. The light's not going to really touch it that much. The tips, maybe, but I'd have to go in there and, and do all like the tips with a, uh, with a brush after. But it's best to get your, your base tone matching first before adjusting up to your uh your highlight tone because yep. your Just highlight like, tone I, is all the colors and yep. one right i love that you're not worrying about like oh man this should probably be brighter in certain areas it's like all right what's the base of this shape it's dark and then we can worry about lightening the pieces after the fact mm -hmm. it's about what are the foundations of all these individual pieces and working with smart objects is is nice i'm going to keep these ones um kind of like bright up front because they aren't actually close so depth of field shows lighting a little bit differently um but for this um the pink uh coral pink plant here i'm going to do the same thing but i'm basically just since it's a smart bring my hue and saturation down boom it's i have both of them on either side i don't have to worry about you know adjusting this one again and all that stuff i'm just gonna keep it at, at that um and then I'm going to go into my, I'm going to grab my, that blue tone that we worked with at the start again, bring it all the way up. I always like to recycle. I was going to say, that's the, that's the magic of having that secret folder at the bottom with all the assets that you're just like, exactly. I can grab something it's out a of little here. treasure chest, right? Yep. So now you can see like, it is kind of getting there. Um, the spot, like obviously the SpongeBob house is being altered right now, but this is how I can see all these being altered all at once. Um, so I'm going to grab all these and put it into uh, a smart object. So now I have my, uh, oh, I missed one actually. 
I know I should be using like hotkeys, but um, I try and avoid using hotkeys on live so that people don't ask a lot of questions. Uh, I was gonna say, I feel like chat appreciates it's like the not hotkeys uh, as much as they can. Oh, and man, just putting that blue shade that you had has made a world of difference. And now everything's starting to fall into the atmosphere. That's yeah. crazy. So just bringing that color back, right? Cause color is very important. I always say that like, actually like just light is very important, right? Um, you, there's one thing that you cannot take out of art and that's light. Um, uh, you could take the artist out uh, and a lot of people are like, no, you can't. I'm like, yes, you can. Um, don't feel unstoppable, but uh, this is an example of taking the artist out um, of the, the art piece. Um, so uh, bees, they create honeycombs. Um, for an act of survival, right? So they create it because they literally need food and that's how they store their food and everything like that. We look at it as a pattern, as a, as a, uh, as an art piece, uh, the honeycombs itself, right? So that's art without a true artist because they were tr creating it for survival, not for art intentions, but yep. we look at it as art intentions. We're forcing a, an artist on an art piece, but there really was no artist. Um, but it's kind of interesting. Uh, light is like literally the most, uh, one of my most important things that I, that I study uh, and, and like to look at is uh, the power that it can really alter a lot of your, your graphics, just understanding the power of light. Um, it's all just black. As you notice, I'm not yeah. sure if you've ever noticed yet that I've only been using black and white brush the whole time. I, I have to say, yeah, there's been no color yet. No, I don't, because I don't do that in, until the end, right? So I, I apply most of my stuff at the end. Right now, I'm just balancing out a lot of the darks, all that kind of stuff. Getting, getting a feel for it. This one should be like completely dark. Uh, so if you haven't chat, um, you can join us at the beginning, uh, right, right, actually before the stream, 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time for the Photoshop Daily Creative Challenges, which you can learn a lot of the things um, that we're talking about here and challenges and even more. If you're interested at all in what we're doing, um, definitely check out the Daily Creative Challenges. They happen literally every single day. Um, Photoshop's in the morning, Illustrator's actually coming up right after the stream. Uh, and then uh, we also have some XD ones kind of scattered throughout, I believe, later today. So there's like nice. eternal opportunities for you to learn. Uh, just tune in, check the schedules. Nice, That's a, I, I wanna get into XD actually. Um... It's so amazing. I, I was so like avoiding it for the longest time uh, and then finally right got now. in and I was like, yep, I think that I love this. This is amazing. I built a website and I was like, this is fantastic. And I love it. Yeah, like I, I just find that I have so much software in my head now. Like Adobe just keeps adding so much. And I'm just like, I'm kind of like voting some software like off the island and all that kind of stuff. I'm like, what yes. can I, what can I learn? What can't I learn right now? What do I yeah. have time for? What don't I have time for? Yes. Um, uh, and I do believe that Julia is up right after us with Illustrator. If you want to follow along there, um, nice. we will be back with Sean tomorrow. Sean, what are we doing tomorrow as we continue? Uh, so tomorrow we're going to add a little bit more elements to this piece. We're going to keep playing with this canvas because there's really no point on, you know, starting something new. So we'll go in more into depth on how to bring the lighting forward again, how to actually blend it and hopefully get to the point where uh, we get to this, something like this. Um, but with you... fish, right? Tomorrow we're gonna try with to... fish, not trash. With fish, not trash. We're gonna go uh, a different way. We're gonna go the the good way um, with it. So we're gonna like reverse this image almost. Um, so as you can I see, like already like a little companion piece. Yeah, we so we've kind of brought like we got rid of the trash up front here, and so far we kind of have a good start with bringing some of this stuff back. So it's definitely a different perspective, though. Yep. So um, come back, join us tomorrow. Thank you, Sean, so much. Uh, and right now, go into the Discord, hop over there. We're going to get some feedback for you um, about our lives. And we'll see you tomorrow. See you, Sean. See you tomorrow, everybody. <laughs>